Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and we are taking a look at the Battle of Alberta going into the 2021 NHL season. Are the Oilers better than the Flames? Are the Flames better than the Oilers? We'll be debating that in today's video. If you like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey, want to see the latest news around the NHL, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. And let's take a look at the Battle of Alberta. Alright, so before we get too far into this video, I want to give a quick plug to our Instagram and Twitter handles at GoalLine underscore Hockey. Links will be in the description down below as well as playing throughout this video. And make sure to support our Patreon, where we weekly podcast every Thursday, just to financially support this channel. That is much appreciated. But if you cannot do that for any reason, obviously with the times we're in right now, completely fine just you watching this video is more than enough support and i appreciate that as well just hit 650 subscribers guys a week ahead of schedule i was expecting maybe next week now we're too good here at goal line hockey the mission is up we are going for 700 and eventually 1k so guys i appreciate the support as always all right so with that out of the way we're done with that let's take a look at the battle of alberta we have the calgary flames and the Edmonton Oilers. We're going to start things off looking at the Edmonton Oilers. We're going to do ladies first here. Oops, did I say that? The Edmonton Oilers. Uh, the Oilers have a pretty interesting roster compared to last season. You've got Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Connor McDavid, and Jesse Poyarvi listed as the first line. Many of you will probably disagree with that. Wanting Dreisaitl in there, or maybe Turris, or Calhoun, or Ennis, or Cassian, or Neal, or whoever you want on that top line. We really have no idea. Uh, but that is the projected top line right now. Uh, you, Nugent Hopkins, McDavid, and Poyarvi. Second line, you get to Dominic Calhoun, Leon Dreisaitl, and Kaylor Yamamoto. Um... Pretty solid line. I think Calhoun was a nice addition. Not Mike Hoffman, which I think they really could have used a Mike Hoffman on this Oilers team. But Calhoun's, I guess, an upgrade uh, to a James Neal or a Zach Cassian. So take with that what you will. Yamamoto in his second NHL season. Expect him to do some great things for this Oilers team in the top six. He's getting a top six role. He's going to thrive, especially if he's playing with Leon Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl is really going to have to carry this line, but if Yamamoto can help out a little bit, that would be huge for the Edmonton Oilers. And Dreisaitl is listed as the first best second line center in the NHL according to Daily Faceoff. So again, take with that what you will, but I like what the Oilers look like in their top six. Now we get into the bottom six, and uh, that's quite interesting. That definitely fuels into the Battle of Alberta rivalry because you look at a lot of grit on these bottom two lines. You've got Tyler Ennis and Kyle Turris. What are you talking about? They're not grit. Hold on. James Neal, a little bit more grit, okay. And then you've got Chason, Jujar Kara, and Zach Cassie. And that fourth line would be feasting on Kachuk, Monahan. They would love uh, to be playing those guys. That is a grit line in a half. Chason, Kara, and Cassie. Now the third line looks considerably better i think having tyler ennis come back was a great move by ken holland kyle turris being inserted as yet another center for their center depth the replacement of andreas athanasiu i don't think he's the best upgrade in that regard but again he is a reliable player he's been in the nhl for some time just got bought out by the predators he's gonna have a little bit of uh, fuel to the fire expect him to be ready to go this year and James Neal coming back. Expect him to come back with another decent season despite what he did two years ago where he absolutely struggled and could not find the back of the net whatsoever. So now look at the defense. Darnell Nurse and Ethan Bear is your top pair for the Edmonton Oilers. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I don't know if that's Daily Faceoff doing that or what. I would rather see Darnell Nurse and Tyson Barry. But guys, let me know in the comments down below, Oilers fans, what do you think of these pairings? You've got Darnell Nurse and Ethan Bear. Second pair, you've got Caleb Jones and Adam Larson. And then Chris Russell and Tyson Barry. Um, I don't want I don't know why Tyson Barry is on the th the third pair. He's probably better than Ethan Bear and Adam Larson. I get why Ethan Bear's on the top pair. They're trying to develop him. Um, but I don't know if that's necessarily the best move. 
Um, and then goaltending. We got goaltending Miko Kaskinen and Mike Smith returning. Now, the big issue with this Oilers team with injuries is Oscar Kleffbaum. Kleffbaum will be out for the season with a shoulder injury. Uh, he is going to be out of service for pretty much the entire NHL season. That's why they brought in Tyson Barry. But even with Tyson Barry, this defense is still very weak, especially on the right side behind Tyson Barry. Ethan Bear could develop this year, and I really hope he does. I've, I've been talking a lot of shit about Ethan Bear, so if he can prove me wrong, I would be more than happy to take my word back on that. I love seeing guys succeed in the NHL, uh, but right now, uh, he's a capable top four defenseman, top pair for an Oilers team projected or hoping to get to the Stanley Cup playoffs, maybe even on a playoff run. Ethan Bear is not that guy right now. Prove me wrong, though, Ethan Bear, please. Seriously, I'm being honest. I really would like to see him continue to develop uh, with the Edmonton Oilers. So now we look at the Calgary Flames. And now we're going to compare the two. So top line, Johnny Goudreau, Sean Monaghan, and Elias Lindholm. Pretty solid line. Not going to lie. That's a pretty solid line by the Calgary Flames that they've developed. Projected to be the 19th best uh, line in the NHL. So take with that what you will. But I think they're better than that. They are pretty solid. Second line, you got Andrew Mangiapane, Michael Backlund, and Matthew Kachuk. That's a pretty solid second line as well. I think Mangiapane showed last season that he has some real potential in the NHL. And this is a guy that's still fairly young, and he has an unbelievable name, which obviously, <laughs> obviously helps him out. He's 24 years old, Toronto native, 32 points last season in 68 games with the Flames. He did play in the top six. The former sixth round pick in 2015 has really turned a corner with the Calgary Flames. Hopefully that continues because I really like uh, what we've seen so far from him. And obviously the Kachuk, Backlund, a pretty solid group there for the Flames. Bottom six things get a little bit interesting. This could be a, a good bottom six, but it's questionable going into the year. Milan Lucic on the left side. Dylan Dubé, the youngster on the right and Sam Bennett centering that line. Bennett is a restricted free agent next season. This is a prove-it year for Sam Bennett. Is he one of those better third-line centers in the NHL? Does he have the potential to be a second-line center in the NHL? He's going to have to prove that this year. Obviously, we know the story with Luch. Luch is there to protect the big guys and obviously a big part of this Battle of Alberta. Um, Dylan Dubé so far, last season he put up 16 points in 45 games with the Calgary Flames, 13 points in 13 games in the AHL with the Stockton Heat, and the season before that in, so in Stockton, spent most of the season with the Heat two years ago, 39 points in 37 games, so he's been above a point per game in the AHL, and he's still fairly young at only 22 years old, he's looking to turn a corner, the BC native, he's going to look to become hopefully a piece that the oil, that the Flames can really make into a, a good player here in Calgary. And then the fourth line, you have Joachim Nordstrom, Derek Ryan, and Dominic Simone. All those guys can play center, and I think that's an advantage for the Calgary Flames. Um, I like how that looks, if I'm going to be honest, for, for the Calgary Flames. Defense, we got Mark Giordano and Chris Tanev as your top pair. Tanev, they picked up in free agency, obviously from the Vancouver Canucks, a fellow a fellow rival in that Pacific division. Noah Hannafin and Rasmus Anderson. Hannafin has definitely taken a step back uh, in his time with the Calgary in yeah with the Calgary Flames uh, since he was drafted by the Carolina Hurricanes, fifth overall. But he still put up 22 points last season in 70 games. Hopefully he can get closer to 30 to 35 points next year with the Flames, and that would be more than enough uh, in terms of him being on his game. Rasmus Anderson signs that nice contract this offseason. This is a guy that I think the Flames are hoping becomes their top guy on the right side uh, moving forward. Now, obviously they have uh, Chris Tanev for now, but he is going to be the guy moving forward. He's a minute muncher, and the Swedish native, is going to be something special in Calgary. I see that in him. 22 points last season, but the former second round pick in 2015, 24 years old, the ceiling it, the ceiling is out, out the roof. Uh, I really like what we've seen from Anderson, especially last season. Hopefully he continues to develop that. 
And we got a couple of other uh, early draft picks here for the Calgary Flames in their bottom pair. You've got Yuso Valamaki, who again, he's another young guy on this team. They're hoping he continues to develop uh, into that that defenseman that they desperately need, especially once guys like Giordano and Tanev leave. The Finnish native last season in Tempere with Liga put up 11 points in 12 games. Another 2017 first round pick. And then looking at the other side, you've got Oliver Chillington. Oliver Chillington, it's taken a little while to develop, but I think a lot of people see a lot of potential in Chillington. Former second round pick uh, back in the day. And this kid's got some potential. And I think, you know, what we've seen from him in Sweden and in the AHL, his numbers haven't been anything crazy. But again, a former 2015 second round pick. He is still 23 years old. Hopefully, he's able to work things out with the Oilers, uh, with the Flames. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see how that works out. Goaltending. That's the big upgrade this year for the Calgary Flames. Jacob Markstrom and David Riddich. They signed uh, Markstrom to that big contract this offseason, which really helped them out. I think the Calgary Flames signing Jacob Markstrom was a must. They had to sign Markstrom. Six years for the next six million for the next six years. So 36 million over the span of this contract. He is a legit goaltender. And as long as he can stay healthy, which has become an issue when his time in Vancouver, as long as he can stay healthy, I could see the Calgary Flames putting up a big fight in that Western Conference. So now it brings up the question. So we've looked at all the rosters both, and we're going to do the head to head now. So forwards. Who has the better forward core? Um, honestly, it's got to be the Calgary Flames. Overall, they have more players that have more potential. Obviously, Goudreau, Monaghan, Lindholm, it's a more well-rounded top six. Kachuk, Mangiapane, Backlund, they can all uh, be really good players. Now, the only thing I'll give the Oilers the edge here is obviously Dreisaitl and McDavid down the center. Monaghan and Backlund is not the same in that regard. But other than that, overall depth, Dylan Dubé, Sam Bennett, uh, Dominic Simone, Derek Ryan, they're depth guys, but I like the depth that they have there. Uh, Luch and Nordstrom aren't anything great, but again, I really think that the potential is there uh, for the Calgary Flames, and they definitely have one of the better second lines in the NHL. Third line, pretty solid. Fourth line, again, there's still unwrapped potential, but with the Oilers... Despite adding Turris, I think they really could use another player. Dominic Cahoon is not Mangiapane. I think Mangiapane is the better player. And But again, I think the Oilers have the edge with the 1-2 punch down the middle. But besides that, I have to give it to the Calgary Flames. Defense, I'm also going to give to the Calgary Flames. Giordano, still, he is not the defenseman he used to be five years ago. But he is still a very capable defenseman. And Chris Tanev coming over from Vancouver was a must. Puts a little bit less pressure on Rasmus Anderson, which is a, a huge piece um, to this blue line moving forward for the Flames. Noah Hannafin has to get a little bit better. That is a weakness. Uh, Noah Hannafin on the left side on the on the second pair is he has to step up or Yusuf Valamaki is just going to take that spot right from him. And speaking of Yusuf Valamaki, him and Chillington on the third pair, it's a development pair. I wouldn't be surprised if we see those two bottom pairs get switched around quite often. Anderson may even be that top right shot defenseman by the end of the year, uh, taking on with Mark Giordano. But I think Anderson and Giordano on their own uh, defensive pairs helps balance out Tanev and Hannafin. Uh, so it just makes sense. But overall, I have to give the edge again to the Calgary Flames. And then looking in between the pipes, it's no question it is the Calgary Flames. As long as Jacob Markstrom stays healthy, as long as he can stay healthy, he is the better goaltender. And David Riddich is better than Miko Koskinen, who is behind uh, uh, Mike Smith. Whoever is the starter there in Edmonton, it doesn't really matter. They are not Jacob Markstrom or David Riddich. Uh, really having Mike Smith come back and not getting Hopi or Markstrom really hurt the Edmonton Oilers this offseason. A big win for the Calgary Flames and Brad Trillevin getting a big get uh, with Jacob Markstrom. Like I said, as long as he can stay healthy, the ceiling is very high for the Calgary Flames this season. In a Pacific division that really just looks very odd. You've got Vegas and Vancouver 
and then it's the Alberta teams who are going to duke it out for probably that third spot, and then the California teams who really haven't shown much. You know, they're continuing to rebuild. San Jose might surprise people, but I, I think they're on the downward trajectory. And then you've got the the Arizona Coyotes who just lost Taylor Hall. So they don't look that much better. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Like I said, I think it's going to be Vegas, Vancouver, one of the Alberta teams, which honestly I'm going to go with Calgary here, and maybe Edmonton or, or maybe one of those California teams finds a way to sneak into a wild card spot. But other than that... The Pacific Division is pretty wide open. I think there's a great chance for the Cal the Calgary Flames to get back into the postseason in 2021. I like their odds. Uh, this team looks pretty legit. So, guys, let me know in the comments down below. What are your predictions for the Calgary Flames next season? Do you think they win that Pacific Division? Do you think they get into the playoffs at the very least? Or do you think they miss the playoffs entirely? Uh, let me know your opinions on that in the comments section down below and if you like what we're doing here at goal line hockey and want to see the latest news around the nhl make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe down below thank you so much for watching and have a great day